five HTML tips for CAT students. And these are tips that are going to help you for your question six of your practical exam or paper two. So let's look at HTML tip number one. And here we're going to talk about special tags. Now, every tag has a closing tag. So for example, if you take the font tag, there's always a closing tag, which has a slash in front of it. But there are special cases where there is just one tag. And that, for example, could be the BR tag or break when you want to put text on a brand new line. There is no closing tag. It's just one tag and you put your slash at the end of the tag. And that's how you write the tag for a special case. This also applies to your horizontal rule or HR tag as well as your IMG tag or the tag that you use for images. And if any of these tags require properties or attributes to be defined, then you put them inside before the slash. You have the attribute equals to its value and this happens as I said before the slash. Now speaking about attributes of the image tag, that brings us to HTML tip number two, where we're talking about checking the image details. And a lot of the times in your exam paper, they will give you an image that is not displaying. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to check the properties of that image tag. And there are four checks that I would do. The first check is to see that you are using the SRC attribute or source. So make sure that you've got an image tag and you've got a source attribute is equal to a value. Then my second check would be, is the image file in the same folder as the web page file? So we go to the folder for this website. We can see that is the page that we are working in and the image file is in the same folder. So it should be working. If it's not there, then you must drag it to the same folder. Then the third check is, are you using the correct file name? So there we are using an image with the name sunset. So if we go to our folder. We can check that we are also using the correct file name, that it's spelled correctly, that there's no spaces. Make sure that it's exactly like it is in the folder. And then our fourth check, and this is the one where it's most commonly going to be the reason why the file is not working. And that's because we are using the incorrect file extension. So if we go to our folder, you will see there that we are using sunset.jpg, which in this case matches to the sunset.jpg. There could be other file types. Maybe there's a PNG or a JPEG, but it's JPEG, or it could be a GIF file. Make sure that you've got the correct file extension. Now, if your computer doesn't show the file extensions, it could be a setting in your Windows Explorer, which says hard extensions of files that you know, then this is a little bit more difficult to figure out, but it's not impossible. All you have to do is right click on that image file, go to properties, and there in the properties, you will see what the extension is. So you know what to include in the source attribute of your image tag. And then HTML tip number three, is using the LR or list item tag correctly. I often see CAT students not using it correctly or not using it at all. And it's to do with bulleted and numbered lists. So when you have a bulleted list or a numbered list like we have here, you tend to use what's called the UL tag or unordered list. And that needs to end at the end of the list. A lot of students end up using the UL tag for each and every bullet. That's not how you use it. You use it for the entire list. And the same goes for numbered lists. You put an OL tag or ordered list and then you must end it at the end of all the numbered items. You do not put an OL for each numbered value. Instead, you use the list item for this. So at the beginning of the bullet, you'll put an LR or list item tag. And at the end of that bullet, you will have a close list item. And the same occurs for the order list. At the beginning of the first number, you'll put a list item. And at the end of that number one, you will put a close list item for that particular value. And then you do that for each and every value in the unordered list for each bullet and for each and every value in the numbered list. So don't forget to use your list item tag correctly. You first create your unordered list tags and you close it at the end of the list. And then each and every individual item, you'll create a list item and a closed list item tag. And this also applies to your ordered lists or numbered lists. And then HTML tip number four is knowing about the three different types of links. You start off with the A tag and then you close your A tag and the text in between becomes the hyperlink, the thing that you click on in order to go to another place. 
So the first type of link is the link to another page or file. Now for that, we are going to use the href attribute and we're going to give it a value. And that value needs to be like we did with images, the whole file name, including the file extension. So if we, we want to go to another web page, you put the name of the web page dot and the extension of the web page, in this case, home.html. Maybe you want to go to an image, then you can have image.jpg, whatever the name of the image is, and the dot, the extension of the image. And this will create a link that when you click on it will take you to that particular item. But remember, these items must be in the same folder as the main web page in order for it to work. Then the second type of link is a link to another website, one that's not connected to yours in any way. In that case, you're going to put the website URL in the href tag. But the key with this is to remember to include the HTTP colon slash slash. If you don't have that, it will not work. So you just put the full URL in the href tag for a link to another website. And then the third link is a link to another place on the same web page. Now there are two steps to this process. The first step is to create a bookmark first. Where do we want the link to go to? We need to create like a marker, like you would in your book where you put a bookmark, that's where you're going to jump to. So we're going to, in this case, we're not going to use the href attribute, but we're using the name attribute. And yeah, we're going to give it a value. It doesn't matter what value it is. You can make it up. It's up to you what you use, as long as you remember what that that value is. So use the name attribute equals to a value and this is creating the bookmark. And then the next step is to create the link to the bookmark. So there is where you go to whatever text or image or item is that you're going to click on to take you to that bookmark. And we are not going to use the name attribute anymore, but here we are going to use the href attribute and it's going to equal to the name that you used for the bookmark. And it's that simple. The only difference is you must make sure that you put in a hashtag in front of the name for the href tag. So it knows that it must go to that particular bookmark. And then HTML tip number five deals with when do you want to span tables? This is used when merging cells in a table and it's used in grade 12 content. So let's take this scenario where we've got a table of two rows and three cells in each row. Let's say we want to merge those two blocks there in the same row. So let's merge them. In order for that to happen, you'll notice that the top row now only has two cells. Now the cells are defined by the TD tag. Now in our yellow row there on the code, you'll notice we still have three cells. We can actually get rid of one of them because we've only got two now. So let's remove the one. So now we only have two cells in the first row, but we need that second cell, that second TD to span over two columns. It's going to stretch over two columns so that it can be merged over those two columns. So the thing to remember is when you are merging cells within a row, it means you are spanning over multiple columns. So you are using the col span in that case, if you are merging cells within one row. And then if we take the original again and we say we want to merge those two cells, that's merging cells within a column, then you'll notice there we still have three cells in the first row, but our second row only uses two cells. So let's remove one of those cells. We don't need that one anymore. But now the second cell in the first row, that one is spanning over two two rows. So we're going to use a row span and equal to two. And that means it's going to stretch over two rows. Remember when you are merging cells in a column, that means you are spanning over multiple rows. So to recap our five HTML tips, first of all, special tags. Remember, there are certain tags that do not end. That is your break tag, your BR tag, your HR tag, and your IMG tag. Don't forget to check the image details, particularly the file extension. That's normally what's stopping your image from displaying. Then don't forget to use the LR tag correctly. You are using it inside your ordered list and your unordered list tags. Don't forget about the different types of links, especially that one that goes to a place within the same web page. You must first create the bookmark, then the link to the bookmark, and then the when to span in tables. Remember when you are merging cells in a row, you are spanning over multiple columns. And when you are merging cells within a column, you are spanning over multiple rows. So those are my tips. I hope it helps you with your HTML questions. If you need to revise your HTML or if you need tips on other content like Access and Excel, make sure you click on the subscribe button of our YouTube channel at Miss Long RT and Cat. Make sure that you follow us and leave a like or a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.